Some of you may have seen my earlier slideshow on this topic which I created in February 2011. Since then, a lot has transpired, so it's time for an update. The information here is current as of August 2014, and the supporting studies for this slideshow can be found at yourbrainonporn.com on the same page as this presentation. Now, how did I end up making a presentation about porn-induced erectile dysfunction? About eight years ago, men started showing up on my wife's forum asking for help with their porn addictions. Her website and forum had nothing to do with porn or porn addiction. It was about relationships and the neurobiology of mating and bonding. The website had articles about the effects of sex on the brain, the neurochemistry of love, the Coolidge effect, etc. Google had put certain keywords together, ejaculation, dopamine, reward circuit, erection, and addiction, and that's what attracted them. They stayed and started helping each other, and we just watched. Google archived their posts, and soon there was a flood of guys looking for help. They were desperate because they had these sexual issues, unexplained ED, delayed ejaculation, no longer being turned on by real partners, and escalation of porn that did not match their original taste or sexual orientation. To their amazement and ours, these problems healed when they eliminated porn. We felt compelled to get the word out because of stories like this one. My erectile dysfunction started about 10 years ago. I've spent thousands of dollars on doctors, including a well-known neurologist specializing in ED. Had to travel a couple hundred miles for that one. Thousands on tests, thousands on pills, and it turns out all I had to do was quit fapping to porn. Unreal. End quote. And another. I've suffered from ED and premature ejaculation for 14 years. My ED has been very serious. No meds work for me. Not Viagra, not cavernous body auto-injection. Official diagnosis, venous leakage. No hope for healing. The doctor told me about a penis prosthesis. 91 days, serious ED is cured. Mild anxiety and mild depression also cured. End quote. I've seen thousands of stories just like these two on forums all over the web. I want to emphasize that these are ED recovery stories, that is, young men with unexplained erectile dysfunction who healed their ED by removing a single variable, porn use. Now, up until a few years ago, few doctors made the connection between internet porn use and sexual problems such as ED and low libido. One exception was psychiatrist Norman Doidge, who wrote about porn-induced ED in his 2007 bestseller, The Brain That Changes Itself. Here's a quote from Chapter 5. During the mid to late 1990s, when the internet was growing rapidly and pornography was exploding on it, I treated or assessed a number of men who all had essentially the same story. They reported increasing difficulty in being turned on by their actual sexual partners, spouses or girlfriends, though they still considered them objectively attractive. Deutsch continues, Today young men who serve porn are tremendously fearful of impotence, or erectile dysfunction as it is euphemistically called. The misleading term implies that these men have a problem in their penises, but the problem is in their heads. It rarely occurs to them that there may be a relationship between the pornography they are consuming and their impotence." End quote. In early 2011, other experts started to speak out. Head of the Italian Society of Andrology, urologist Carlo Fresta, said, Internet porn is killing young men's sexual performance. Fresta continued, it starts with low reaction to porn sites, then there is a general drop in libido, and in the end, it becomes impossible to get an erection, end quote. By 2013, the list of experts was expanding. Popular medical show, Dr. Oz, did a program on porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Urology professor Andrew Kramer, psychiatrist Sue Varma, and sexologist Ian Kerner discussed patients they had treated. In early 2014, professor of urology at Harvard Medical School and author of four books on men's health, Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler said, it's hard to know exactly how many young men are suffering from porn-induced ED, but it's clear that this is a new phenomenon and it's not rare, end quote. In 2014, Dr. Harry Fish, 
professor of urology at Cornell University and the author of The New Naked, had several things to say about porn's possible effects. Here's just a few. When I say that porn is killing America's sexual behavior, I am not kidding, nor am I exaggerating. I can tell how much porn a man watches as soon as he starts talking candidly about any sexual dysfunction he has. A man who masturbates frequently can soon develop erection problems when he's with his partner, add porn to the mix, and he can become unable to have sex." End quote. While more and more clinicians are making the connection between internet porn and sexual dysfunctions, others remain oblivious, including most researchers. For example, this 2012 Swiss study found that 30% of men 18 to 25 suffer from erectile dysfunction. The researchers concluded that such a large percentage in young men should act as a red flag for health professionals. However, these researchers did not ask about porn use as a possible cause of ED. Just to compare, the famous Kinsey report from 1948 found less than 1% of men under 19 suffered from ED, and about 3% of the men under 45 had ED. Maybe Kinsey's percentages were low, as he may have employed a slightly different definition of erectile problems. However, note the title of this 2013 study. One patient out of four with newly diagnosed erectile dysfunction is a young man. Worrisome picture from the everyday clinical practice. The other surprise, the rates of severe ED were higher in men under 40. Erectile dysfunction studies on men under 40 are quite rare. Here's an exceptional study on the rates of sexual problems in sexually active 16 to 21 year olds. No virgins were allowed, which excludes many adolescents with porn induced ED. Still, 54% of the males reported sexual problems more than the females. What's crazy is that this percentage is higher than found in adults. Secondly, in those adult studies, far more females than males reported sexual problems. Erectile dysfunction and low sexual desire were the most common problems for young males. Researchers had no idea why rates were so high. Of course, they didn't ask about porn use. Recent Japanese surveys reveal more. In 2010, 36% of men aged 16 to 19 had no interest in sex, double the figure from 2008. And over 40% of those married have been sexless for at least the past month. End quote. The rates doubled in just two years. Something is seriously wrong. In my dinosaur days of the late 60s and early 70s, a teenage guy not interested in sex would have been sent to a psychiatrist. A Japanese medical doctor published a book about this phenomenon called Young People Averse to Sex. Here are some of the quotes from the doctor. One young man said that having sex with someone is just too much of a bother. Other young men claim that they prefer girls as anime characters. The doctor said that some young men come to his clinic complaining of erectile dysfunction, while others explain that watching too much sex on internet sites has left them with a bad taste in their mouth. Many admit to extremely frequent masturbation, thereby satisfying all their sexual needs themselves." End quotes. That last quote obviously means watching porn. A 2008 French survey found that 20% of young men were not interested in sex. You know something's wrong when the French have no interest in sex. Considering how quickly rates increased in Japan, I'm wondering what a survey in 2014 would reveal. You're probably wondering, are there any studies on porn and sexual problems? A few upcoming studies were discussed in this 2014 lecture by Dr. Carlo Foresta. Remember him? He's now the president of the Italian Society of Reproductive Pathophysiology. A longitudinal study examined the rates of sexual problems in high school teens. Sexual problems doubled in just eight years, climbing from 7.2% in 2005 to 14.5% in 2013. Shockingly, loss of sexual desire increased by 600%. 
from 1.7% in 2005 to 10.3% in 2013. Now remember, these are high school teens. Dr. Foresta blamed internet porn for the dramatic increase in sexual dysfunction. This is an upcoming study by Dr. Foresta, Sexuality Media and New Forms of Sexual Pathology, males 19 to 25. And here are some of the findings from a standardized test used to assess male function. The left column contains four categories of sexual function. The right column divided men into regular porn users and not so regular porn users. Higher scores are better. Look at sexual desire. I didn't circle that. Foresta did. The lowest score possible is a 2. The highest is 10. Regular porn users averaged about a 4. Non-porn users were double that at 8. Now these are 19 to 25 year olds, yet regular porn users have averages that parallel old men. I circled erectile function. Regular porn users had significantly lower averages than in erectile function. So much for the myth that porn use is driven by libido. In addition to Foresta's upcoming studies, two recent brain studies on porn users revealed ED and arousal issues. The first study was by addiction neuroscientist at Cambridge University. The name of the study, Neurocorrelates of Sexual Cue Reactivity in Individuals with and Without Compulsive Sexual Behaviors. This study compared porn addicts to a control group of non-addicts. It found that brain changes in porn addicts mirrored those in drug addicts. I will get back to this later on. Here's a key quote from the study. Porn addicted subjects reported that as a result of excessive use of sexually explicit materials, they experienced diminished libido or erectile function, specifically in physical relationships with women, although not in relationship to sexually explicit material. N equals 11. N means number, so the number was 11. That's 11 out of 19 subjects had low libido or ED as a result of their porn use. That's 60%. The subjects of the second study were not porn addicts, and they were not asked about sexual problems. Instead, the study correlated the amount of porn used with changes in brain structures and how certain brain regions responded to sexual images. Researchers found that the more hours viewed per week and the more years of porn use correlated with lower brain activation while viewing sexual images. Said the researchers, this is in line with the hypothesis that intense exposure to pornographic stimuli results in a down regulation of the natural neural response to sexual stimuli, end quote. Put simply, this means that the more porn used, the less sexual arousal. They also found that brain changes correlated with porn use, and we will look at that later on. Erectile dysfunction may be the last step in a long porn journey. Like the subjects in the previous study, there are signs along the way. Here's a short list of what guys report about how porn use impacts sexuality. Earlier genres of porn are simply no longer exciting. Escalation to more extreme porn or porn that doesn't match original sexual taste is quite common and indicates the need for more stimulation. Decreased penile sensitivity, sometimes caused by death grip, but also caused by brain changes. Delayed ejaculation, anorgasmia, the two most common precursors to ED. Porn is more exciting than a partner. If porn is more exciting than the real deal, something is definitely wrong. They need to fantasize about porn to maintain an erection during sex. Morning wood and spontaneous erections decrease or no longer occur. Weak or no erections even with porn. This may be the final step. Surprisingly, many guys reach this point and still do not make the connection between porn and their chronic ED. To understand porn-induced ED, we need a few basics about erections. Control is rather complex, but the mechanics are pretty simple. The arteries leading into the penis get wider or dilate. The penis fills with blood and compresses the veins leading out of the penis. Erections are caused by a traffic jam involving blood flow. 
The key point is that erections are controlled by the nerves. Here's the chain of command that controls erections. Very simply, specific centers in the brain involved with sexual arousal send messages to the spinal cord, which send signals down the spine to the spinal nerves. The spinal nerves send messages to the penis to increase blood flow. Here again are the nerves that traveled from the spine, spreading out to the blood vessels and to the smooth muscles of the penis. Let's look at a single nerve cell in action. In this expanded picture, we have a single nerve cell to the right sending a message to the penis cell on the left. The arrow is pointing to a lightning bolt, which represents an electrical impulse traveling to the end of the nerve cell. Uh, the impulse triggers a release of neurotransmitters, the little red balls, from the end of the nerve cell. It's the neurotransmitters that tell the receiving cells what to do, not the impulse. These neurotransmitters trigger the production of chemicals in the penis that increase blood flow to produce an erection. Two key points here, the neurotransmitters are immediately destroyed, which means we need a rapid fire stream of continuous nerve impulses, like a machine gun, to maintain the neurotransmitter levels and to maintain our erection. Of course, the frequency of nerve impulses is determined by what's going on in the brain. If you have porn-induced ED, the problem is, is with the brain, not the penis. For reasons we will explore, your brain is no longer sending sufficient messages to your penis. ED drugs like Viagra work at the level of the penis. Remember, the neurotransmitters activate chemicals that increase blood flow to cause erections. Viagra works by preventing the breakdown of these chemicals. ED drugs cannot initiate erections. It's the brain that keeps the neurotransmitters flowing and your erections firm. Let's look at the brain and hypothetical causes of porn-induced ED. Hidden under the relatively bulky outer layers is the ancient reward circuit, pictured here. The reward circuit is pretty much the same in all mammals. We will be using a simpler version. You are looking at a slice through the center of the brain. The reward circuit is activated when we engage in behaviors that further our survival or the survival of our genes, such as sex, eating, bonding, falling in love, achievement, taking risks, and novelty. Novelty activates the reward circuit, as can shock and surprise. That's what makes the internet so enticing. Dopamine is the neurochemical that powers the reward circuit. Think of the reward circuit as the engine that drives our most basic behaviors, and dopamine is the gas. Dopamine is the craving neurochemical. Its message is, I've got to have it, whatever it is, whether it's the next potato chip or the next video clip on Pornhub. Dopamine is not really about pure pleasure. Those are other brain chemicals, such as opioids and endorphins. Dopamine equals wanting or craving. Dopamine is all about anticipation of something really good. Since dopamine is wanting and anticipation, it provides the motivation to pursue our desires. Dopamine propels us into action. Some scientists call the reward circuit the seeking circuit. Attaining food is vital, but reproduction is your gene's number one priority. To that end, sexual stimulation produces higher dopamine levels than any other natural reward. In other words, you know the difference between a mind-blowing orgasm and chewing on an apple. Dopamine is a major player in both erections and sexual desire. It's likely that porn-induced ED involves insufficient dopamine. Let's explore what inhibits dopamine, the mechanisms involved, and what brain regions are affected. Here's the reward circuit again. I'll present a simplified sequence of events that produce an erection. When you are sexually excited, the red dot, called the nucleus accumbens, or simply the reward center, fires up and sends signals down to the hypothalamus, which is the blue dot. I moved the hypothalamus a little bit to make room for the arrows. 
The hypothalamus contains erection centers that integrate the messages, and then it sends nerve impulses streaming down the spinal cord to the penis, producing and sustaining the erection. Here's the key point. If porn-induced brain changes inhibit normal levels of dopamine in either the red dot, which is the reward center, or the hypothalamus, the message is weak, and so are erections. The reward circuit is continuously bombarded by messages from other parts of the brain. It is these messages, both internal and in your environment, that affect dopamine levels. Being sprayed by a skunk drops dopamine. It's aversive, while clicking onto your favorite tube site elevates dopamine a lot. Here's the bottom line. Problems in the reward circuit, or maybe problems with the hypothalamus, which is the blue dot, or even problems with messages from other parts of the brain, represented by the yellow arrow, can all play a role in porn-induced ED. To understand the brain changes that cause porn-induced ED, you need to first know that all addictive substances and activities elevate dopamine. That's what makes them potentially addictive. Cocaine, alcohol, nicotine all feel different, but they all flood the reward circuit with dopamine. Key point, drugs simply hijack the circuits and mechanisms that evolved for normal rewards, especially sex. Sexual stimulation is unique among all natural rewards. You see, sex activates the exact same reward circuit nerve cells as do meth, cocaine, and heroin. That's what one reason why these drugs can be so addictive. Other natural rewards like food, water, salt, etc. activate a different set of nerve cells. Here's my graphic representation of this concept. Now you are looking at the close-up of the reward circuit. The big red ball represents the reward center, which is the barometer for wanting and craving something. Sex activates the part of the reward center in yellow. Other natural rewards activate the region in blue. So green in the middle represents a small overlap, about 10%, between sex and other natural rewards. So what are the takeaways from this? First, this addresses one of the most commonly asked questions. Will other dopamine-raising activities slow my recovery from porn-induced ED? Orgasms may slow the progress. We will talk about this later. But other natural rewards should not slow things down. However, I suggest staying away from meth, cocaine, and heroin. Second, this dismantles talking points such as, well, lots of activities raise dopamine, so internet porn is no more addictive than watching sunsets or playing golf. Yeah, that's an actual quote from a sexologist. I think you probably know the difference between masturbating to porn and a walk in the park. A major reason you know the difference is that sexual stimulation activates its own special set of reward center nerve cells, the same nerve cells activated by cocaine and meth. Then we add in the fact that sexual stimulation produces far higher dopamine levels than any other natural reward, and we see the silliness of such statements. Beyond the naturally high dopamine levels of sexual stimulation, Internet porn has unique properties that can keep dopamine surging. First, there is endless novelty. With each new image or new porn star, you get an extra squirt of dopamine. Searching and seeking keep dopamine elevated. Remember, the reward circuit is the seeking circuit. Anticipation of the next sex act or the next image pumps up your dopamine. Material that shocks or surprises also jacks up dopamine. Anxiety can cause a jump in dopamine, and that's one reason why horror movies are exciting. Porn that is shocking to you or causes you anxiety can jack up your dopamine. This is not conjecture, as studies show that anxiety can increase sexual arousal. Here's the key point. With high-speed internet, you can control your dopamine with a mouse. That's what makes the internet so unique and so compelling. As soon as dopamine starts to drop just a little, you click to a new image or a new video or a new genre of porn, and up goes your dopamine. You couldn't do this with earlier versions of porn, not magazines, not VHS tapes, 
not even with the internet before high speed. A heavy porn user can view more hot babes or hot guys or hot whatevers in 15 minutes than our hunter-gatherer ancestors would meet in several lifetimes. Musician John Mayer sums it up. Internet pornography has absolutely changed my generation's expectations. How could you be constantly synthesizing an orgasm based on dozens of shots? You're looking for the one out of a hundred you swear is going to be the one you finish to. And you still don't finish. End quote. But John Mayer was born in 1977. Young guys today describe visiting their favorite tube site, lining up 20 tabs of three minute videos, and then clicking from video to video with their right hand as they masturbate with their left hand. Now guys may not even finish a three minute video before clicking to a new one. Some watch compilation videos that switch scenes every few seconds. Unlike still images, videos completely replace your imagination and limits you to the position of voyeur rather than participant. Here's an older guy who developed problems only after accessing streaming videos. I've used porn for years. My problem escalated about 18 months ago when I got high speed internet. All of a sudden I went from just viewing pictures online to viewing videos and movies online instantaneously. I never really gave it much thought but after almost daily viewing, sometimes even binging for hours on end watching porn videos, I really began to notice a change in my personal sex life with my wife. I had never really had any ED problems at all, but now, whenever my wife and I have sex, I cannot get an erection." End quote. Only with high-speed internet and tube sites can you instantly boost your declining dopamine by simply clicking on a video of a completely new genre. If lesbian porn no longer excites, it's on to girls with goats. If farm animals now bore you, maybe female domination or gang rape will jack up your dopamine. This is not about what genre of porn you are currently watching. This is about dopamine levels. Sexual novelty combined with intense emotions such as shock, surprise, anxiety, maybe even shame, can really blast the reward circuit. Guys often describe developing porn-induced fetishes simply by clicking from video to video while masturbating, bumping into a new genre, then orgasming. They may eventually need the new genre just to get off. Here's a very common story. Surprisingly, after starting NoFap, I've noticed that I barely even think about any of the extreme fetish images and fantasies that once plagued my mind. I figured ridding my mind of these sick fetishes would have been the hardest thing to overcome. But it's more like a feeling of, what a shame, I needed that kind of crap to get off? WTF man, end quote. Not only has the content of porn evolved to be ever more extreme, so has the delivery system. Porn is now omnipresent, free and accessible at every age, at any time, in high definition video. The talking point that today's porn is no different from Greek statues or 1970s Playboy is beyond nonsense. You can watch porn on airplanes, at work, in libraries, or on your smartphone at school. Maybe you start right after dinner and surf porn until you fall asleep. Some guys deliberately defer ejaculation and maintain a high arousal state for hours, often searching for the perfect scene to finish them off. This is called edging. This also means high dopamine for hours and the brain training that goes with it. Or internet porn is used to override normal satiation mechanisms, the I'm done feeling. When these guys eliminate porn, their masturbation frequency goes way down as they find their true libido. Here's a key point. Addictive drugs and food have limits to consumption, not internet porn. You can watch day in and day out all day long. So you get it. Internet porn is a dopamine producing machine. The usual question is, what are the possible consequences of all this dopamine? But the more accurate question is, what are the possible consequences of all this dopamine in response to one type of stimulus? In this case, internet porn and a computer screen. One of the possible consequences is a full-blown porn addiction. 
Yes, indeed. Behavioral addictions share the same fundamental mechanisms and brain changes as drug addictions. In fact, the very slow to change Bible of Psychiatry, the DSM, just created a new behavioral addiction category. In 2011, the American Society of Addiction Medicine declared that addiction is one condition, whether it's alcohol, cocaine, gambling, or sex. And there are now over 70 brain studies on internet addicts. Some include porn use, and all show the same brain changes as seen in drug addicts. Addiction involves multiple and complex brain changes. Sensitization is often the first major brain change caused by addiction. With sensitization, anything associated with the addiction lights up the addict's reward circuit, creating overwhelming cravings to use. For example, a recovered alcoholic might experience intense cravings simply by walking into a pub. Another brain change is desensitization. I call this a numbed pleasure response. This involves a decline in dopamine signaling, which leaves the addict hungry for dopamine-raising activities, especially his addiction. Here's one way to visualize sensitization and desensitization. On the left, we have sensitization. Anything associated with the addiction just hammers the reward circuit. On the right is desensitization. Everything else is far less exciting than it used to be. Socializing, sports, movies, eating, sex. Now this is what drives addiction, the imbalance between the overpowering cravings to use and experiencing less pleasure in normal everyday activities. Add to this the pain of withdrawals, which drives the addict back to the addiction for relief. Addiction is very complex. It involves far more than just these two brain changes. Here's a key point. Both sensitization and desensitization can occur without the presence of a full-blown addiction, as in porn-induced erectile dysfunction. One thing we have learned in the last few years is that a guy can have porn-induced ED without having a full-blown porn addiction. That is, some guys can easily quit and they experience few withdrawal symptoms and maybe only mild cravings. Let's take an in-depth look at sensitization. Sensitization occurs when the brain wires together the sights, the sounds, smells, sensations, emotions, and memories associated with a big reward, such as masturbating to porn, creating a pathway that can blast our reward center. When activated by cues or triggers, this pathway creates powerful, hard-to-ignore cravings. For example, simply turning on the computer might activate sensitized porn pathways, so might a sidebar picture on a popular news website. Here's two guys describing sensitization at work. Relapsed to porn once, and even though I didn't get fully erect, I could not believe the intensity of the rush I got when I clicked to the site. Very powerful excitation, tingling, dry mouth, and even trembling. Guy 2. It's like being possessed by a porn crazed demon, and then once you're finished, your real self returns and wonders what the hell just happened and why you just wasted all this time. End quotes. Sensitization is a unique and powerful form of Pavlovian conditioning that alters the reward circuit both structurally and chemically. Instead of salivating to the sound of a bell, your reward circuit fires up in anticipation of internet porn. Remember the Cambridge study I mentioned earlier where 60% of porn addicted subjects said that porn use had caused ED or loss of libido? Well, that was a brain scan study and it found sensitization in those same porn addicted men. Now compare these two rows. The porn addict's reward centers lit up when exposed to porn far more than normal healthy controls, just like the brains of drug addicts do when they are exposed to drug-related cues and triggers. Understanding sensitization is a key to understanding porn-induced ED and how to recover from it. So we know sensitization begins with high levels of dopamine, which tells your primitive brain that this activity is really, really valuable and you should do it again and again. And nothing is more important to your primitive brain than spreading your genes. Even if you are just trying to impregnate a screen, 
Dopamine's ultimate goal is to have us remember and repeat. Dopamine does this by triggering the production of a protein called Delta Fos B. Whether it's drugs or natural rewards, high levels of dopamine can lead to the accumulation of Delta Fos B. This image shows how Delta Fos B accumulates with chronic overconsumption. What's unique about Delta Fos B is that it hangs around in the brain for about eight weeks after your last binge. Delta Fos B activates certain genes that begin to change the brain. As Delta Fos B levels rise, it rewires the brain to want it, whatever it is. This can create a circular process of wanting, leading to doing, and more surges of dopamine, which triggers the production of more Delta Fos B, and the cycle continues. So it's really Delta Fos B that creates sensitization, and it does this by building stronger nerve connections. Sensitization and other forms of learning are governed by this simple but important principle, nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Here's a picture of three nerve cells connected with the top two communicating and firing together. In this simplified model, the first nerve cell might be your favorite porn star, while the second nerve cell would be in the reward center. Note what's about to happen with the nerve cell connections in purple. There are now far more connections, along with chemical changes, that facilitate communication between the nerve cells. So when a memory or trigger activates your favorite porn star nerve cells, your reward center nerve cells are blasted with messages, which you experience as cravings to watch porn. This process is analogous to walking through a field of grass. The more often you take the path, the easier it becomes. Eventually, porn can become the path of least resistance, or even the preferred path for sexual arousal. Let's visualize the fire together, wire together principle at work in a 13-year-old boy just discovering tube sites. Adding internet porn into the mix creates two competing sexual pathways, porn in yellow and real in white. Sure, Jessica in algebra is cute, but if a 13-year-old boy is masturbating every day to gang bangs, cream pies, or tentacle porn, the Jessica pathways will have a hard time keeping up. Here's why. He's not masturbating to thoughts of Jessica, but to porn. His brain is constantly reinforcing the stimuli he associates with masturbation and ejaculation. The sensitized porn pathway is now preferred because it leads to a bigger reward than the real pathway. The white line representing real people is dotted for a reason. It can take young men with porn-induced ED far longer to rebuild the real person pathways. Younger men often need months longer to recover. The reason? The highly malleable adolescent brain is designed to wire up to its environment, its sexual environment, in order to successfully reproduce. This involves sexual conditioning, which means training the brain to want and crave sexual arousal under certain conditions. With internet porn, this includes being alone, sitting in a chair, voyeurism rather than participation, continuously searching and seeking for the next hit of dopamine, constant novelty with each click, multiple tabs each with a three minute video, shock and surprise to maintain arousal, new genres of porn, multiple porn stars per session or per video, fetishes of every imaginable and unimaginable type. While this type of sexual conditioning is far more powerful during adolescence, it can occur at any age. So whether you are 22 or 52, the disparity between real sex and masturbating to internet porn is a major factor in porn-induced ED. Your sensitized porn pathways light up for one type of experience, yet real sex is a completely different kind of experience. Dopamine is odd. It shoots up when something is better than expected, when an experience violates expectations, but dopamine drops when expectations are not met. Once a man conditions himself to internet porn, sex may not meet his unconscious expectations. Unmet expectations induce a drop in dopamine 
and weak erections. Remember this picture of the reward center and how the same nerve cells that are activated for sexual stimulation are also activated for addictive drugs? I've been using this picture to represent both sensitization and sexual conditioning. That's because both involve not only the same reward center nerve cells, but also shared mechanisms and brain changes. With Delta Fos B as the major player, here's the name of the study. Natural and drug rewards act on common neuroplasticity mechanisms with Delta Fos B as a key mediator. The natural reward here is sex. Quote from the study, Natural and drug rewards not only converge on the same neural pathway, they converge on the same molecular mediators and likely the same nerve cells to influence the wanting of both types of rewards. End quote. This means that cravings for addictive drugs or for porn all tap into the same mechanisms and brain pathways, with Delta Fos B driving the bus. And to state the obvious, addictions hijack the mechanisms and pathways that evolve for normal sexual conditioning. Whether sexual conditioning or addiction are involved, the advice to overcome porn-induced ED is real simple. Stop activating the sensitized porn pathways, start building the real person pathways, and of course you need time. With time and disuse, the sensitized porn pathways will weaken, while continuing to rewire your sexual arousal to real people will make those pathways stronger. I'll expand on these suggestions at the end. The second major brain change behind porn-induced ED is desensitization, which occurs in both drug and behavioral addictions. I also called this a numbed pleasure response. Desensitization involves chronically low dopamine signaling, which urges a person to seek out dopamine-raising activities, especially whatever he is addicted to, such as porn. Now, desensitization is behind tolerance, which is defined as needing a higher dose to achieve the same effect. For porn users, tolerance may manifest as escalating to new genres to elevate slumping dopamine. Here's one man's experience. When I got internet back in my late teens, I found many YouTube-like porn sites that categorize content by fetishes. At first, my taste in porn was that of a normal teenage boy. But taking a closer look over the years, I noticed that my taste in porn have shifted into more aggressive content, violent themes against women to be more specific, especially those anime hentai videos with scenarios that were just too vile to be portrayed in real life. Eventually, though, I got bored of that stuff, and when I entered my 20s, I found new stuff. But what's interesting is that my taste in porn changed more and more frequently, so that within a year, I had acquired so many new fetishes, each changing in a shorter time frame than the one before it. End quote. To understand desensitization, let's look at two reward circuit nerve cells communicating. Dopamine is released by the nerve cell sending the message on the left. Dopamine attaches to receptors on the nerve cell receiving the message to the right. Think of receptors as little ears that hear the message. The message, or dopamine signaling, is dependent on the number of connections, the amount of dopamine released, and the number of receptors to hear the message. A decline in any one of these leads to a weaker message. With dopamine constantly blasting the reward circuit, the nerve cells say, enough is enough. If someone screams at you, you cover your ears. Nerve cells do this by removing dopamine receptors and reducing the amount of dopamine released. The bottom picture. Fewer receptors activated or less dopamine means weaker signals, which translates into less excitement. It's like your eight-cylinder engine is now running on two cylinders. But desensitization may also involve the next step, which is a decline in the number of nerve connections. The branch-like parts of the nerve cells simply fade away. Since the branch-like connections appear gray, this is referred to as the loss of gray matter. Remember this study? Earlier I said that hours per week and years of porn use correlated with less brain activation while viewing sexual images. 
researchers also found higher porn use correlating with less gray matter in the reward circuit. Lead researcher Simone Kuhn said, that could mean that regular consumption of pornography more or less wears out the reward system. Dr. Kuhn continued, that would fit perfectly the hypothesis that the reward systems needed growing stimulation, end quote. In other words, desensitization leading to tolerance. Now remember this picture and how key regions such as the nucleus accumbens, which is the reward center, and the hypothalamus require adequate dopamine signaling to achieve and maintain erections. This 2012 Italian study confirmed the hypothesis that less gray matter in these regions is associated with erectile dysfunction. Scientists compared two groups of men with erectile dysfunction. Men with an obvious physical cause, that's organic ED. Men without any known physical cause, that's psychogenic ED, which is psychological, whatever that entails. But was it really psychological? The group of men with psychogenic ED had less gray matter, which means fewer connections in two regions important to erections that we've already looked at, the reward center in red, the hypothalamus in blue. Less gray matter translates into less dopamine signaling and less stimulation, so psychogenic ED may actually have a physical cause. The takeaway is that higher amounts of porn use correlate with the loss of reward circuit gray matter and less sexual arousal, and that less reward circuit gray matter correlates with so-called psychogenic ED. It's clear to me from the evidence and self-reports that desensitization is also a major player in porn-induced ED. Here's a question I've often pondered. Is the hypothalamus altered with porn-induced ED? The hypothalamus contains male sexual centers and erection centers, but these regions are not associated with other types of addictions. If we consider how long it takes some of the younger guys to recover, the months of low libido, or how orgasm can set some guys back, then porn-induced ED seems to involve more than just the reward circuit. The brain study on psychogenic ED and the physiology of erections point to alterations in the hypothalamus. Whatever the cause, whether it's sensitization slash sexual conditioning, or desensitization, or changes in the hypothalamus, the solution is still pretty straightforward. Stop activating the sensitized porn pathways. Start building or nurturing real person pathways. Eventually, the porn pathways will weaken, desensitization will eventually be reversed, and your real person pathways will develop. I'll now expand on these concepts and cover a few other basics, but there are so many nuances to healing porn-induced ED that I suggest visiting the ED and porn section on yourbrainonporn.com. The suggestions that follow come from guys who have successively healed porn-induced ED. If you want to weaken sensitized porn pathways, you must stop all artificial sexual stimuli. This is called a reboot. You may ask, but what about... No, 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 no. If you have to ask, the answer is no. This means no porn substitutes. No cruising Facebook or dating site pictures, no surfing Craigslist ads, no erotic literature, nothing artificial. You need to step away from the screen, stop clicking to get your dopamine hits, and stop training your brain to be a voyeur rather than a participant. Remember your goal and train your brain accordingly. Start training for the right sport. By the way, it's not a problem if you accidentally bump into porn. The problem is when you actively seek it and search for it. During the reboot, most guys eliminate or drastically reduce masturbation. Most also cut back or eliminate orgasms even with sexual partners. Now this is the most controversial aspect of rebooting. However, this is a one-man experiment. You need to observe how orgasm and masturbation affect your progress. Be adaptable. A few key points here. There are many, many more. The reboot is temporary. The goal is recovery, not abstinence. Young guys often need long stretches of no masturbation and orgasm. I can't really say why. 
older guys may not need long stretches of no orgasm. Some only eliminate porn. Do not force performance. Let it occur naturally. If and when you masturbate, do so without porn or recalling porn. Guys suggest focusing on sensations. At a certain point, some young men may need genital massage or masturbation to jumpstart their libido. See the FAQ on long rebooters. Rewiring your sexual response to real people may be important, depending on your history. Men who grew up without internet porn seem to recover faster and may not require retraining their brain to become aroused to real partners. They just need a timeout from porn. However, many young men who spent their adolescence watching internet porn report that rewiring played a big part in their recovery. Contrary to misconceptions, rewiring involves all sorts of activities, not just intercourse. Dating, touching, hugging, you name it, just being around potential partners is therapeutic. How do I tell if my ED is porn induced? Now this is a very common question. If you have ruled out organic causes and the doctor thinks it's performance anxiety, try this simple test. On one occasion, masturbate to your favorite porn or just simply recall how it was. On another occasion, masturbate without porn or recalling porn, just two sensations. Compare the two. If you have trouble achieving or maintaining an erection without porn, this indicates a problem. You shouldn't have performance anxiety with your own hand. Many guys have ED even with porn, so this test isn't perfect. Ultimately, you may need to do a reboot to answer this question. Although quitting porn may lead to a constellation of withdrawal symptoms, it's the flat line that is most unsettling. A quote from a 22-year-old man, I've noticed the dead penis syndrome whenever I try to quit porn masturbation. After about four days, my libido is absolutely shot and my penis shrivels up to nothing. It's terrifying, actually. End quote. Flatline symptoms include, number one, almost complete loss of libido. Number two, indifference about sex. It's the, I know objectively that she's hot, but I feel nothing. Number three, lifeless genitals. Sometimes they're even cold or shrunken. Number four, loss of morning erections. Number five, it's sometimes accompanied by depression. And be aware for number six, it can last from a few weeks to several months. And some guys cycle in and out of flat lines. The flat line is very common, even in guys who didn't have porn-induced ED and the panic often sends guys back to using porn. You need to realize it's just part of the process. Finally, the most common question is, of course, how long will it take for me to completely heal? It cannot be answered. Way too many variables, and each brain is different. However, the general pattern has been that older men, ages 35 to 60, usually need about 8 to 12 weeks. Once healed, they are good to go and fairly stable. Some young men need 6 to 12 months or longer. We have seen a few needing 2 years. In addition, young guys may be unstable with ups and downs and also too many orgasms too soon after a reboot sometimes sets them back a bit. For an explanation why it takes young guys longer, watch Adolescent Brain Meets High Speed Internet Porn. Guys often wonder why rebooting times can be so variable. Here are a few factors that may, I say may, increase the length of the reboot. Now we've already talked about number one, which is using porn during adolescence, especially high speed porn. Starting regular use at a young age can increase the length of the reboot. The ratio of masturbation to porn versus masturbation without, that is, if you if most of your sessions are with porn, that can increase length, lack of sexual experience, or not ever having a girlfriend or boyfriend may play a role. High frequency of sessions, maybe several sessions per day, that of course can increase rebooting time. Length of sessions, including edging, maybe the session lasted a couple hours, that's normal for you, that can increase rebooting time. 
And of course, escalation to genres that don't match your innate sexual taste can increase rebooting time. But remember, anyhow, just remember the brain is malleable so everyone can in fact heal. As this guy did. After years of porn, I was having trouble with erections. It had been getting worse and worse for a couple of years. I needed more and more types of porn stimulation, and it still was not helping. I was really worried, but the anxiety just pushed me deeper and deeper into more extreme porn. The more I go without porn, masturbation, fantasy, and orgasm, the more difficult it becomes not to get an erection, LOL. No ED problems or weak ejaculations like I had just a few months ago. My body has healed, end quote. Visit YourBrainOnPorn.com for more information on porn-induced ED and links to forums where thousands of men are recovering from it.